hear me? Uh, my name is Walt Lukin, and it's, it's a pleasure to be here. And thank you, John and Doug, for organizing this, and Jim. Um, I want to ask you, what do I have in common with Bill Gates, Bill Clinton, Conan O'Brien, and Alec Baldwin? The answer is absolutely nothing, um, <laughs> except that we interned on Capitol Hill when we first started our career. And I, I love internships, and I encourage all of my friends to take and do internships whenever they can, because it's a really powerful way for you to, first off, find out what the hell I don't want to do you know, when I grow up. Um, it's really important to use these as ways to exclude things that, and to try things that you may not normally be willing to try. So please don't feel bad if you don't like your job. That's good. That's part of the process is learning what you don't want to do as a career. Secondly, expanding your network. And that's the first one of my, my, uh, my career path recommendations. Um, you know, you're going to get a network by doing this that you would not have been exposed to. And what that does is it lowers the risk not only for you as an intern to know is this something I want to do, but potential employers that get exposure to you, they're able to understand how you work, what your work ethic is, how you're willing to take on challenges. So internships are extremely important. I'm, I'm glad you're all here to, and uh, experiencing that over the summer. Um, I am uh, head of uh, the Futures Industry Association, as Doug mentioned. The Futures Association, Industry Association is a trade association. So we're located in Washington, D.C. Uh, trade associations are membership organizations. They represent the interests of those people within a certain industry, whether it's the medical industry or, in our case, the financial services industry. And we advocate on those people's behalf. So whether that's in front of the government, it could be in front of Congress or regulators, but it could be just on our own that the industry sees a problem that is a collective problem that it wants to fix. And we as an industry try to bring all these divisive issues together and find consensus. And that's what our job is, is to find solutions to problems that the industry may be experiencing. You know, there's a Chinese proverb that says, um, may you live in interesting times. We live in certainly interesting times. Actually, if you look it up, it's it's actually considered a curse. Um, this, this is actually very uncertain times that we live in. Um, you know, in November, we will elect a president that nearly two-thirds of the American public do not like or trust, no matter who is elected. Think about that. Two-thirds of the populace right now don't really trust or like the current candidates that are before us. This is really important in Washington. Having been somebody in Washington, it's not electing one individual, but a president gets to a point nearly a thousand political appointees that are confirmed by the Senate. If you expand that beyond all the political appointments, it's nearly 7,000 people that turn over when a new administration comes into effect. That's hugely important, hugely massively important. So weigh your, you know, your decisions wisely in November uh, when the presidential elections, and go vote, obviously. Um, I would say this too, I mean, if, if looking at uncertainty, look at what ha recently happened in, in the EU with the Brexit dis determination, where Brit the British public decided to leave the EU. Um, they're already, amazingly enough, considering a referendum to re-enter, uh, to possibly debate this in September of this year, September 5th, to re-enter the EU, what I call Brentrance. You know, Brexit was, <laughs> so I, I've trademarked that, John, so you can't use that. Um, but I mean, it's, it's clearly a, a large amount of uncertainty is gonna happen as a result of this for years to come. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to remember, um, I was married in the year 2001 when September 11th happened. So I, that marks sort of both good things in my life and, and bad things in my life. But you're probably too young to remember what it was like before September 11th. We're now 15 years into a war against terrorism, where we've gone into war with troops on the ground, and then under the current administration using more subtle ways to defeat terrorism. But there's no clear path of how we do it. And that's going to be lingering on for years to come. You throw on top of that global warming, super viruses, whatever there may be in the world, there's all these complex problems that are creating this uncertainty in the world. And there's going to be a need for people to come and help us to solve these complex problems. And you're the ones sitting in this audience to help us to do that. Looking at our industry in particular, our, you know, we also are living under a cloud of uncertainty. You know, volumes in our industry certainly is it's been doing fine, but underperforming where they should be. Um, you know, I think everybody would like to see volumes doing better. If you look at where the financial crisis where it was in 2008, 
where how much customer funds were, were being held and traded on futures markets. Fast forward to today, it's the same amount of money being held. It's remained flat over eight years. I mean, amazingly, any investment you put in remaining flat over eight years, that's not a very good investment. And certainly our industry is not growing where it should be. You know, as, as costs rise in our industry, as regulatory costs keep getting piled on to the industry, uh, firms are having to make the tough choices, and we'll hear from some of the firms today, of how do, how do I continue to be profitable in this environment? Do I consolidate with colleagues? Do I, do I try to bring more business in? Or do I get out of the business entirely? All these things are playing out in our industry uh, as we speak. And you may ask yourself, dude, you're, you're, you're the spokesman for this industry. Why are you being such a bummer? You know, why? And I would say to you that I'm actually very optimistic about this industry uh, for some of the reasons that John talked about. Um, I believe in markets. I believe that the power of markets, that markets will help us to allocate wealth and capital to the right investments. Uh, I believe in innovation. I think this is one of the most innovative industries around. And that's one thing that attracted me to this, this industry in the first place. And I believe in ideas. I mean, we talked about Richard Sandor and inventing certain products in our industry. Those are the kind of ideas that really revolutionize this industry. And so you're in a very exciting industry. And fundamentally, the, the demand for risk management in our financial markets to service the real economy is not going to disappear. It may change on the margins, and, and people may leave the business, but it's going to be here and innovating in, in a, for a long period of time to come. So what I wanted to do is, is as we thought, think about this, to give you hopefully some, some bits of advice. And the first, I have five really things I wanted to, to, to ask and, and to try to recommend for you to follow as you think about your career path. And the first is networking. Um, you know, this is a great, John has put together a great event that allows you to network uh, with different people. I think when I was growing up, and part of it was being Midwestern and shy, um, you felt like, oh, I shouldn't use those people are using their connections, their family connections, to get jobs, and that's unfair, you know, that they're using their network and their friends and their connections to, to do things. But the truth is, you gotta use that, those networks, and, and it's not because you're getting a special favor. The truth is, friends and family know who you are. They know how hard you work. They know that you're willing to commit to things. And so using those connections to get jobs, to get into these places, that's a, an asset for you. Everybody should be using those things. Don't be shy about using those connections to try to, to get your network, expand your network, meet new people. Secondly, learn to, to, to write and communicate simply and concisely. Um, I am amazed at, at grads that come out and they're not able to put together a simple memo um, to, to write and to communicate concisely. I think a lot of people have the idea that you communicate both through long essays and a lot of words. Um, I always try to remind people that the Gettysburg Address was 270 words. 270 words that Abraham Lincoln wrote and basically changed the Constitution on the fly. He said that all men are created equal, you know, and at the time that wasn't the case when the Constitution was was written. Amazing stuff in a concise manner, right? The guy who followed him, Everett Everett, Everett, or Edward Everett, uh, he was a, a famous orator and he was a politician. The governor of Massachusetts spoke for 17,000 words for two, over two hours. No one even knows he did that, you know? <laughs> 270 words, he wrote it on the train ride up. Abraham Lincoln, he changed the course of history. Be concise. Be concise in your writing and in how you communicate. Do the dirty work. I think Drew talked about this a little bit before. You know, I think I, in just my own, my own view, I was in law school and I interned um, at an office of Senator Richard Luger. Yeah, he was from Indiana, senator for many years. Um, you know, I could have, as, a, as a, a law student, demanded that I work on policy, you know, that I, I go down to the floor of the Senate and help write bills. Well, no. What I did was I went up to the mail room in this dungy mail room upstairs, and I opened constituent mail all summer. All summer, every day, five days a week, eight hours a day, reading complaints from constituents. Was that below me? Maybe. But I learned a lot. I learned about all the issues that the populace of Indiana were thinking about and where the pulse of the nation was trying to you know, concentrate its efforts. 
Um, and I did a, a task that they needed somebody to do, right? And I, I showed that I was working hard and I was able to do the dirty work. And you know what? Two years later, they called me and offered me a job. Not because I knew how to do policy, not because, because they, they knew my work ethic. They, they knew that I was willing to do the hard work. And that's really important to not feel entitled, I think is true called it, to go out there and do the things that are important. Get educated, but the right education. I mean, I think if you look at all the statistics that are out there, education is highly cor correlated to standards of living. So if you look at un unemployment rates that are out there, you know, uh, somebody without a high school uh, education, unemployment rates are 8.3%, pretty high. If you have a high school uh, education, it drops to 5.4%. If you have a college education, it's 2.3%. These are, there's reasons for these. These are highly correlated. And even beyond that, if you look at STEM, uh, the sciences, the math, the engineering programs, those are the places where um, unemployment rates are even lower. So even those people like myself, policymakers, political scientists, whatever, I would encourage you to get some exposure to STEM classes, um, coding, science, math, whatever it might be. Uh, because if you look at the statistics about STEM graduates, most of them are not working in STEM fields. They're, they're elsewhere. They're, out there, they're lawyers, they're doctors, they're doing other things. Um, out there, they're using the science background to promote themselves, and like I said, it's it's a very helpful thing as as, as career uh, career advice and, and what employers are looking for. And lastly, I would just say the golden rule, um, you know, the two thousand year old golden rule of be nice to others, do unto others as you as you would want them to do to you. And the reason I say that is, of course. If, there's a moral aspect of it. I mean, certainly it's the right thing to do. You're taught that by your parents. But being nice to your other to others is actually good career advice. You know, if you're nice to others, they're willing to trust you, they're willing to call you back, they're willing to help you out when you're in a bind. There's all sorts of benefits that happen just because you're nice to people. If you're a jerk, yeah, that may get you ahead in life at certain circumstances. But the truth is you're not always going to be ahead in life. There'll be times when you need help when you need your network, when you need the people who you've been nice to. So don't, you know, don't necessarily, and by the way, I'm nice, I'm not nice all the time. You know, I'm, I'm a jerk. I'm a jerk sometimes, you know. I, 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 I offend my staff, Heather's here, you know, she, but it's at times, I mean, it doesn't, I'm not offending Heather. But, uh, but I mean, it's, it's not that, you know, it's something you should strive to be, you know, to try to be pleasant to write thank you notes, to do little things that show people that you appreciate them. And you know what? They're going to go out of their way to help you in your career, and, and your network is going to be stronger as a result. So those are my five pieces of advice I wanted to provide to everybody. John said I couldn't do a mic drop, so I, I won't do a mic drop here at the end. But I just want to thank you all. I think internships are wonderful programs, and thank you for the Lothian series, Lothian series for allowing me to do this today. Thank you.